Welcome to Framework Fortune. I'm your host, Ben, and it's time for another episode of Abnormal Investing. And in this episode, I'm not going to be looking at one investment, but rather the craze that has swept the U.S. and the globe that is non-fungible tokens, NFTs. Now, if you're new to crypto or maybe you invest a little bit, you dabble, but you don't quite know what NFTs are, that is a non-fungible token. And to understand that, we got to understand what's a fungible token. So the best example I can think of as a fungible token would be Bitcoin. Every single Bitcoin is worth the same amount. There is no difference in those coins, right? Same thing with the U.S. dollar. There's trillions of U.S. dollars out there and they're all worth one dollar. That means they're fungible. It can be traded and it can be exchanged for the same amount or purchase other things. A non-fungible token is exactly the opposite. There is not a whole bunch of non-fungible tokens that are exactly the same out there. In fact, every non-fungible token is uniquely different. And you can see right behind me, we have an actual definition. And you can see a non-fungible token is a unit of data on a digital ledger called blockchain where the, each NFT can represent a unique digital item and thus they are not interchangeable. They can represent digital files such as art, audio, video, and other forms of creative work. So hopefully you have a little bit better understanding after hearing the definition and my short definition. But let's dive into it. I'm going to give you my thoughts, kind of a pros and cons in this video of what I think about these NFTs. And I have tried to purchase a few, but I've ran into some snags. But first, let's look at, when you Google NFTs, what type of headlines come up. So, right off the bat, you can see Mark Cuban backed Mintable on the bull case for NFTs. So, Mark Cuban's backing him. Wall Street Journal, the method to the madness of the $69 million art sale. And if you don't know what that was, it was a Beeple artwork. Beeple is a guy. He was just making digital artworks. And I guess it caught on. And one of those artworks actually auctioned here recently for $69 million. And that artwork was a NFT. So his digital artwork, each one is uniquely different. And then we see the third headline here, NYC man sells fart for $85, cashing in on the NFT craze. So while intriguing and very well put out clickbait from the New York Post, not surprisingly. I don't really want to know how he made a fart into an NFT, but this is how ridiculous it is getting that you can sell a fart as a profitable trade. It's insane. So there's a lot of different NFTs out there. The platforms, some of them I've already covered, like OVR, and this is the OVR website. And if you haven't seen that video, you can go find that video in the rest of the Abnormal Investing series where I dive a lot deeper in and actually go treasure hunting for some of their tokens. My goal was to end up trying to purchase some of the digital land that are NFTs in augmented reality in the OVR world. Now, the augmented reality, of course, is over our world. So they have a whole globe of little digital plots of land and I was interested in buying the side of the Hoover Dam because if there's going to be anywhere that people or businesses want to advertise in augmented reality I figured one of the seven or nine how many ever wonders of the worlds there are that's where a lot of tourists are going to be who will be looking on their phones anyway out into the distance and right on the side of the Hoover Dam I just saw Sprite or Coca-Cola something like that in my head and thought maybe that could be an interesting investment. Now, the pro the plots that I wanted to buy, of course, each little plot is only a piece of the Hoover Dam and some of it was already bought, but each little piece was going for $10 worth of OVR tokens. Problem is, when I went to start the auction, well, it takes Ether, it takes Ethereum token to make the transaction. And for that $10 plot on the side of the Hoover Dam, it was going to cost me $100 in gas fees. And gas fees on the blockchain 
are basically transaction fees for moving money and NFTs across the blockchain. And this is one of the cons. So the $10 NFT piece of land, a part of the Hoover Dam that I wanted to buy, was going to cost me $100 in Ethereum to move it. So I couldn't purchase it because I'm not going to spend $100 for a $10 piece of land. The investment was appetizing to me at $10, but $110 is very speculative, and I'm not willing to take that risk, especially because I wanted to buy multiple pieces to have a big enough advertising space. So with the price of Ethereum continually going up, this is going to cause problems when trying to get these NFTs. Because just to invest, you're going to have to have a significant amount of Ether tokens to try to buy them. Now, it's a con now, and it's a pretty big con. If this doesn't get fixed, this could be one of those hype, tulip mania type of things and just go away because how many people are going to keep spending huge amounts of money just to buy these nfts maybe they will maybe they won't it's pure speculation but i do believe that blockchain is the future my only problem is right now it's extremely expensive so there are some other blockchain networks cheaper than ethereum that are starting to come out like loop ring and Loop Ring is going to run basically right beside of the Ethereum blockchain to make transactions cheaper. We'll see if that happens, but I read that on OVR's blog that they're looking to start working with Loop Ring to make these transactions cheaper. But by that time, all the great advertising space that I was talking about, like if you wanted to get the side of a pyramid, that's all probably going to get bought up by people who's willing to pay those expensive gas fees. So maybe I miss out. It is what it is, but I'm not going to overpay for a very speculative investment. Here is Axie Infinity. As a site loads up, this is basically a blockchain style Pokemon game where each creature is an NFT. It's a non-fungible token, so each one is unique. Now this uniqueness I do think is a pro. And the reason why I think it's a pro is exactly that. It's unique. There's only one of that NFT. So in a game like this where you're battling other people, and if you're a nerd and love Pokemon or anything like that growing up, or maybe still do, imagine having your own digital Pikachu that nobody else can have. It's 100% unique and will be in your digital wallet forever as long as blockchain continues and there's electricity. So when you look at it from an investment perspective, that uniqueness means that each little non-fungible token has only one in the supply chain. So like if you want this big whatever creature this is in a, a big shell here, or you want this little pink puffer with an arrow through its head blowing its little horn, well, that will be the only one in existence. So if other people, a lot of other people, really want your pink puffer with a horn, then that means there's a lot of demand and there's only one in the supply. So that price can skyrocket. And that's why Beeple's artwork skyrocketed was because there was only one of that digital artwork and a bunch of people wanted it. So the price got bid up and bid up and bid up. That is the pro that I do see to these NFTs where you can make some huge money investing in them. Now, at the same time, while I'm saying this, because these are digital, it is also a con. And the reason why I say that is because if you don't have electricity or the blockchain crumbles or whatever happens, something drastic happens, well, then you're going to lose it because you can't physically hold these. These investments are not like gold or like silver where you can wear them or have them in a safe or anything like that. If you lose them, you lose them and they're gone. And another con of this, especially on the artwork side that I see, you could copy that Beeple painting if you wanted and just have it on your hard drive. Now of course it's not the original one with the Beeple signature on it, but if you just want a copy of the picture, 
well, then you can get that pretty easily. So to me, that makes the demand not quite as high. But if people are looking at Beeple like he's the new Da Vinci or Michelangelo or something like that, then people are going to pay the high price for those original artworks. Now, if you are a creator and you create digital artwork and you're not in the NFT market selling your artwork, you probably need to get there because right now it's so hot, you very well could turn into the next Beeple. But from an investment standpoint, I'm not a big fan of the artwork side. I like the idea of the augmented reality and being able to purchase plots of digital land where you can get advertisers to pay you to use it. That sounds like a good idea. I like the idea of a game like this where you own your character and you can do what you want with it. See, most gamers have a problem when these new games come out that are regular EA Sports or any of the big name companies. They come out with all these stipulations and different packages you can buy and then your character is saved on there but it's not really your character they own the game and the character is not really that unique i mean if you create your own character it's going to be a little unique but you're not going to be able to do much with it outside of that game whereas with the blockchain games they are decentralized and ran by the players instead of a big corporate company so I think that's great for game development. I also think that it's great for community building and there's some value there. So that would be another pro. So there's a lot of pros and cons to weigh out on this. Of course, investor types like Peter Schiff are, is gonna say this is all nonsense, that these are not physical items, that there's no real value to these. And that is true to an extent but value is only in the eye of the beholder. Value is a perspective type of thing. And as an investor, all you're doing is buying something and looking to sell it at a higher price in the future. So while you may see no value in this, it doesn't matter what you see. It matters if somebody else is willing to pay more than what you paid for it. And I do see a lot of these opportunities in the NFT market. Another concern about the blockchain in general and these NFTs, there is a lot of energy that goes into running the blockchains and mining the tokens and creating all that stuff. It brings up a point that how much of this can we keep running when they're running so much energy already now of course we're getting a push to more green energies and the markets are trying to innovate and I think the markets will innovate as long as governments stay out of the way different topic and we won't go off on that but point is you let the markets innovate I think we will see renewable energies that will be able to push these blockchain applications and games further in the future but in short term we're not quite there yet so one of the cleanest energies and most efficient at the moment is uranium power plants now when you think of uranium power plants you might think of chernobyl and say oh those are dangerous but anymore the innovation has led up to where they're not really that dangerous anymore of course anything can happen we know that especially after 2020 but more than likely you're not going to have some type of crazy meltdown and uranium powers about 20 percent of the world's energy so if you're skeptical of all this but you still want to get in on some of the blockchain hype or the future of blockchain uranium stocks or the commodity itself may be an alternative investment for you instead of one of these NFTs or one of these digital currencies. But short term, I see a lot of issues with these NFTs. Long run, I think this can all get worked out. I think innovation will drive this and I do believe this is the future, the future of gaming, the future of real estate, the future of a whole lot of different industries. This is very disruptive and it takes the government out because all these are decentralized and ran by their token holders and players of the games or app users. So now let's throw NFTs into Google Images 
and take a look at the types of NFTs that are out there. Like you can see in the background, these are some of them in the Axie Infinity game. And they're not all creatures. Some of the stuff can be land, like I said, with the Central Land and OVR. And I think there's land in Axie, if I remember. And then there's also items that are NFTs. So there's some pretty cool customization and uniqueness that these games can bring. All right, so here we are on Google Images. And we can see some of these. Here is actually the Beeple that sold for $69 million, I believe. If I'm wrong about that, correct me in the comments. But I think this is it. It was just a whole bunch of uh, his artworks put together in one big artwork. So here's one that's just kind of stupid looking. It's a cat with a rainbow and I guess a Pop-Tart. Somebody probably bought this. Hey, like I said, whatever. This one's a little bit more interesting here. This is actually a very nice piece of artwork. Not really sure what the message is, but I'm not big in art, but I do like how she has different eyes and this type of unique painting I could see hanging on somebody's wall. And with the digital artwork, even though the NFT is not actually real, there are tablets and other picture frames that you can digitally upload your original NFT artwork to and hang it on your wall. This is one I could definitely see hanging on somebody's wall. Very unique picture. So here we have another one, a pizza with Bitcoins flying around it. This is a very strange NFT. Maybe some coked out actor would have this on their wall. I don't know. It's not something I'd have on my wall, but to each their own. All right, and here's some of these crypto kitties. Now, some of these crypto kitties have sold for quite a bit. And what you're buying is you're just buying the digital signature of this kitty and you'll be able to use it in game to fight other kitties, I think. I'm not dove that much into the crypto kitty world yet because, you know, it kind of looks like a little kid's game. But people are paying top dollar for some of these crypto kitties. So there's a lot of different NFTs out there. There's a lot of different applications. I'm sure as blockchain continues to grow so will all these applications. I do think right now it's overhyped. We tend to see that when new technology or new items come into the market. Before Oculus Quest, there were some VR headsets that were out there, but they were pretty much garbage. They wasn't really VR. It was just some little lenses, kind of like the little red thing that you used to put on your face as a kid and stick the little film wheel in there and flick the thing. It's kind of what it was. So the first thing is not always the best thing. And that's part of speculative investing like this. You don't always want to just buy the first thing that comes out. So crypto kitties may be hot right now, but we know how short consumer attention span is because we move from one topic to the next on social media quicker than you can make a sandwich. So could be some other game that ends up blowing up and Crypto Kitties dies off. And if you've been holding your expensive Crypto Kitty you paid a bunch of money for during the hype, well, you could lose all that money essentially. So I wouldn't go out and try to buy a $1,000 or $100,000 NFT. I would look for some of these smaller projects like OVR where they're a lot cheaper but try to find them where you don't have to pay such high gas fees, and that may not exist. So far, I've been doing my research, but I have not been able to find one yet the where I can buy an NFT for the price I want and not have to pay an astronomical amount of gas fees. So hopefully that changes soon. But my final thoughts are, are NFTs a good investment? Who knows? Is anything a good investment? Nobody really knows because the whole purpose of speculative investing is to potentially sell to somebody at a higher price in the future. That's pretty much it. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. And if you haven't yet, smash that like button to teach that dirty algorithm a lesson. I'm your host, Ben. You've been watching Framework Fortune.